Welcome to this outfits video. This will be a mishmash of bizarre outfits that I've worn during this weird warm autumn phase that isn't really autumn and is still feeling a lot like summer. I had fully intended on doing like a full autumn outfits video, like autumn outfits I've worn recently, but it's just not weather appropriate. The knitwear and the coats are not out yet. So knowing my luck though, by the time this video goes up, it will be snowing. So none of this will be appropriate whatsoever. But when I talk through the outfits, I will kind of talk about how I might update them for autumn, you know, like switch out a shoe, add a jacket, add a jumper, that kind of thing. This video is in partnership with Farfetch. If you've watched these videos, videos before, you will know from time to time, Farfetch do partner up with me and they give me a few pieces to feature in the video. They will be all worn with pieces that are already in my wardrobe, so it all slots in very organically. I feel like a broken record at this point because, because I always rave about Farfetch and how good they are for several different reasons. Mainly for me, it's those hard to find pieces because Farfetch is a website that is like a shop front for so many boutiques around the world that don't necessarily have an online presence. So they're not shops that you would necessarily come across on Instagram or, you know, like when you're searching for something on Google. So Farfetch allows you to shop those boutiques. So often I'll find something that I can't find anywhere else in like a little boutique like the other side of the world. Um, so it's a great way to support smaller businesses. They recently introduced a beauty category as well, um, which is really good. And the pre-loved category is also great. I do feature a piece in this video from their pre-loved category, which is really, really nice. The actual pieces are blue, as is the category. Wow, I'm really digging myself a hole here. Anyway, maybe I should just get on with the outfits. All the links will be in the description box along with any alternatives where a piece is either old season or out of stock. I hope you enjoy this video. It feels nice to start bringing in some heavy denim into outfits and a small hint of colour. Although the shirt is still in the same family of greys and navy, it leans a little bit on the purple side, giving it a slightly fresher feeling. This outfit is made up of very standard pieces, but it's all about the details here, the big cuff of the shirt, the paper bag waist of the jeans, and then the white accessories lift those slightly greyer, darker pieces of clothing. I know some people say you should never match your bag with your shoes, but actually I quite like doing that. Um, this feels very kind of La Mer. I always take a lot of inspiration from La Mer actually around about autumn because they're so great with layering and they're great with details, they're great with fabrics and they're great with silhouettes. And then to finish it off, I added silver jewelry. I felt like the silver really popped against the purple and the gray more so than gold would. It's highly likely you will have seen an iteration of this outfit if you watch the vlogs because I've been wearing these pieces to death recently. Starting with these men's vintage 501s. They're very crotchy, obviously, because they're men's jeans. They're very slouchy. The bum is quite ugly. I'm not even going to show you, but they're so comfortable and I love all of the paint marks and the holes and the blue wash is just spot on. Paired them with the this Uniqlo U t-shirt and an Arquette belt. It's the blazer that really puts in a shift here and elevates the jeans and the t-shirt. So the blazer is a wool cotton blend and has a sheen to it. I wouldn't describe it as shiny or sparkly. It's a very subtle satin sheen, which is quite hard to show on camera. And it just takes it up a notch from being a standard black blazer. In the same vein as the first look, I've used white accessories to create a contrast along with silver jewellery. It's definitely not flip-flops and tank top weather anymore, but switching out a few things could make this much more autumn friendly really easily. Red has been absolutely everywhere at the moment. It feels fresh, it feels new, it feels fiery and zingy and I totally get it. I think to make this a bit more autumn appropriate, I'd just swap this out for just like a really nice like red merino knit perhaps, or just maybe even like a red t-shirt. And the flip-flops for, I'm trying to think, like perhaps a loafer or maybe like a, a, a like a kind of Cuban-esque boot perhaps, you know, something with a kind of chiseled almond toe and a small heel. I really like the red thing going on and it works really well with grey. The grey brings the red down, but it also helps the red pop, if you know what I mean. They balance each other really well, and this is another fit where I think 
the blazer's really blazering for me. I think I've finally found my kind of, I'm on the blazer train, finally. For the purposes of the weather at the time of filming this, I then just showed the blazer tied around my waist because that's naturally what I would do if it got too warm. But I think this little kind of trick could still work. If this was like, I say, like a red knit, and I just wanted to take my blazer off. I could just tie it around the waist still. And I think it still creates this nice kind of interesting detail and thing going on. It kind of reminds me of some of the styling that you might see at Tibby. Tibby's a brand that, again, I always look to for styling because they're great with layers. They're great with silhouettes, fabrics. Um, and actually tying something around the waist is like completely functional. Like it's such a simple, easy thing to do. And it is a great way to be hands free whilst not having your jacket on. This next look follows the same pattern as the first look in terms of the silhouette and using that kind of paper bag waist with a, a flowy shirt. But this feels slightly more, I wouldn't say formal, maybe a little bit more polished because the difference here instead of denim, I've gone for a black trouser, but it's still in quite a casual fabric. These are a cotton trouser which I've then contrasted with this beautiful buttery yellow silk shirt. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And then using that heeled shoe to kind of, you're kind of like sandwiching this more casual trouser in between two slightly more formal pieces, I guess. But the shoe could easily be swapped out for something like a loafer, maybe a glove shoe. Watching this footage back now, actually, I'm thinking a boot with a similar toe shape and a blocky heel could look really cool because then that continuation of the black all the way down to the floor would create even more of an interesting shape with the trousers. And then I've used gold jewelry because I think it complements this buttery yellow more so than silver. There's something, I think the silver's a little bit too dull against this also quite dull yellow, whereas the gold lifts it and makes the yellow feel even more kind of buttery and rich. And then my fifth and final look is an example of how I have used this fantastic totem blazer in the evenings. Many of you will have seen in the vlogs, I have been using a kind of patterned scarf layered under the blazer, but over the top of a skirt. I'm using that same method here, but I'm using this beautiful kind of sheer overlay skirt from Giorgio Armani. This was part of the secondhand section on Farfetch as just a way again because like I've said so much of how I get dressed is just about small details just taking basic items and then adding things just to kind of push it a bit and I think this really beautiful kind of like bluey purpley silky overlay is a really great way of doing that I would like to perhaps get this just taken up like a couple of centimetres because when I wore it last, I had to kind of roll it up around the waist so that it didn't drag on the floor so much. So I would like to just get it so it just slightly hovers above the floor. But I was also thinking that this could be quite cool to experiment with perhaps maybe like some oversized knitwear as well. Like I've been looking at the Carvin Spring Summer 24 show, which is probably one of my favorite shows that I've seen of that se of the season. And there's just some really beautiful uses of sheer layers there in these kind of like really delicate colors, but incorporated with knitwear and trenches. So I would like to play around with this overlay more. But this is how I've worn it a couple of times out for dinner recently. And this is also a great example of showing you how I use the belt to really sort of like create more shape there against that sharp shoulder. <laughs> 